Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be back to, uh, to Israel, but uh, uh, to the cabinet too. Uh, uh, and uh, to join uh, with the prime minister and all his uh, ministers here uh, in a comment and uh, in the delivery of uh, the economic survey of Israel. As you know, this is something that is done uh, every 20 months, more or less, for all the members of the OECD. But uh, I have to say that uh, although we are delivering this uh, on time and in, in the, on calendar, uh, we have been working with Israel on education, uh, on health issues, on the skills issues, on governance and government issues, on energy, on the question of how to deal with the gas, uh, uh, with the newfound uh, discoveries. We're working on well-being, which is something that you have been uh, promoting and pushing forth, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, the question of the development of the IT and the cyber, uh, the clusters. Uh, and uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, social cohesion, as you know. In this cabinet, we presented uh, the first ever uh, uh, well, diagnosis uh, about the fact that social cohesion was something we had to work on in Israel, that we were falling short, that the growth was fine, that the, the technology was fine, cutting edge was fine, but social cohesion was falling short. And then um, you all asked me to go and present this to the Knesset, and we did, and it was a rather lively uh, um, I would say somewhat noisy every now and then. You survived uh, session, it. Huh? Oh, we did great. This it was, was a great. great test for the OECD. <laughs> and we have just updated uh, the work on the social cohesion precisely to, to keep that uh, under, under constant uh, review. Uh, so I'd like to say uh, that I bring today a, uh, a very positive message. Uh, and I'd like to say congratulations to you all. Congratulations. Uh, to the Israelis uh, because they've done a good job um, and uh, because uh, given the state of affairs in the world, Israel uh, is uh, looking uh, uh, steady, strong, and uh, uh, I think uh, moving in the right direction. Now, uh, <coughs> let me just put that in the, con the proper context. You, we believe you are going to grow at maybe 3.7, 3.8 or something like that this year and uh, probably going to stay around that level, 3.5%, 3.6% uh, next year and the year after. Now, just to put it in context, the world is growing at 2.7%. Uh, the OECD is growing at 1.2%, which is one-third of the speed of growth of Israel. So Israel is growing three times the Three OECD. times the speed of the OECD, the OECD on average, average. yes, yes. Um, uh, in the, the I euro. Give this to the finance minister. Not so. enough. Okay, so okay. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Very good. The finance minister just said the important words. Okay. Okay. Just said the right words, the finance uh, the, uh, In the euro area, uh, this year is still going to be uh, negative, although we are still in positive territory towards the end of the year. So we believe that next year will be in positive uh, growth. But I, I just want to say this again to put in context. We are still in. in we are still looking and suffering the effects of the crisis. Unemployment is still growing in uh, uh, the Eurozone. Uh, around 12%, it has stabilized more or less, a little bit higher than 12%. So Israel's uh, unemployment is roughly half, unemployment rate is roughly half the, the OECD. I average. thought you would not let the opportunity pass of to course, mention no, it. No, <laughs> I make comments. The finance minister will make his comments. I have that. We I, have to keep it this way. This is, this is, again, to put it in context, the average in the OECD is 8%, okay? In the United States, is about 7.2, 7.3, and here you are uh, at 6% or slightly uh, below 6%. So what was the 12%? So, and uh, the 12% is in the euro area. Ah, in the euro. In the euro, I euro said, uh, area. You're talking Imagine about the euro area. Yeah, the of young people in the euro area, which is about 20%. Sorry, so... Tw double, double that. So yeah. Israel 24, is, 25, is half the so euro area and yes. uh, three quarters of the OECD. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and below uh, the United States and below, uh, you know, your, again, uh, a very uh, positive uh, outcome here. Uh, I'd also uh, like to say that uh, uh, different from what is happening in other parts of the world, 
Here uh, you have a game changer. That means something that kind of shakes up the whole situation and changes and delivers. One is the continuation, of course, of the high-tech uh, sector, which continues to power and continues to move forward. The other is, of course, uh, the game changer, which is the gas. Now, just to put it in context so that we uh, 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 maybe uh, will look at the, what would be the growth of Israel this year and next year, this year 3.7, next year 3.4, 3.5, without the gas, well, it would be 1% less this year, 0.7% less next year. That means it would be the cruising speed, X gas, let's say, would be 2.7, okay? Now, the, but the question is, you have the gas, okay? So the question is how to make the most out of the gas. In this cabinet, I remember we had a big discussion. How to make it a fuel for growth and not drugs. And what, uh, well, and, and also how do you d avoid the Dutch disease? I don't know why they call it the Dutch disease, poor Dutch guys, but uh, you know, the, hap the thing is that suddenly you get a bonanza, you get well, uh, I could choose another you know, country's uh, name, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have, you have in, in Mexico, I mentioned this in the cabinet meeting then, I said, the president then said, let's learn how to administer bonanza, how to administer the prosperity, etc. And of course, two years later, we were kind of half, uh, you know, uh, bankrupt because we started spending the money before we actually getting the, re the receipts. That is uh, very important to keep, uh, to keep the, the very great prudence in, in the question of the natural resource uh, windfall. Uh, because managed properly, it can be an enormous lever for, for growth and prosperity. And of course, but if it becomes a mirage, it becomes something which you are start to write checks against uh, instead of waiting until you have the money in the bank, you know. Then, of course, uh, uh, this can be a, a problem. Uh, now, what are some of the issues? Now, I have the report cards, as I said, looks good. You have a sound banking system. Uh, the, the, the central bank is keeping monetary policy steady as she goes. You do not have inflationary uh, pressures that are imminent of any kind. So then let's then focus on some of the things that perhaps are the challenges, okay? And of course the document here uh, speaks and documents very well both the good side and all the good re uh, results as well as the challenges. Well, I think the question is broadly, how to translate these good results, these good numbers, into uh, broad-based improvements in the living standards uh, across the population. And again, here we come to the question of uh, social cohesion. You are a country of now very close to 8 million people, uh, of which today you have uh, uh, around 2 million people, uh, and growing very fast, by the way, uh, that uh, are uh, outside of what I would call the mainstream of the benefits of uh, this type of growth that you are having. And of course, uh, that the Arab Israelis and the uh, ultra-Orthodox, uh, the Haredi. So now, so when you're talking 5.9% unemployment below, uh, you know, uh, the United States and uh, two-thirds of the uh, OECD and uh, uh, half, uh, whatever, you really are talking about record lows and these are good averages However, if you are looking at these populations, in particular uh, uh, these, uh, the Arab Israelis and the uh, Haredi, you really have much larger uh, percentages uh, of uh, unemployment. So does this mean that in the rest of the population, the, the, the unemployment is very, is lower, very, very is lower? In, in many cases, you have the opposite problem. In many cases, what you have is you are kind of bumping up what I would call uh, uh, the, the problem of whether you have enough labor supply uh, right. for, for, a, for that particular for sector so to, to continue to grow. Yeah. And and skills. Yeah. And this has to do with the challenges on, uh, on education and the, on the skills in particular. Uh, so uh, if the average is six or a little below six, and you have very large numbers in a very important Excuse part me. of the population, uh, you know? I think the, the fundamental issue is that one, that is uh, to uh, be able to uh, spread uh, the, uh, the growth, the benefits of the growth, the benefits of the, uh, of the uh, uh, development uh, so far. Make sure uh, that uh, we do take care of uh, these populations. Uh, uh, you have to understand, Prime Minister, that uh, 
if we could be successful in incorporating fully uh, uh, these populations into the Israeli economy, mm. the potential clearly is, is, is just enormous. Now, this is something you discuss every day. You know this every day. <laughs> but what uh, I'm bringing here is uh, that, that the numbers are, are showing this. Now, uh, it is not uh, a, uh, a very uh, great uh, uh, secret. Uh, we just put out our PISA results for education. And what they show is that you have made improvements, but you are still below uh, the average, and you are still, in some cases, one year, uh, one and a half years, two years, and of course, a two to three years difference with the leaders. Uh, but still somewhat below the average, and again, that is a situation where we have to really uh, focus. Uh, there's also an I area... Think, I think this requires, I mean, we'll talk about it, but I think it requires, when, when you're that far away, I think that incremental change is not the solution. When you're that far away, you need uh, radical steps. Yep. Uh, you know, to adapt to the education to the 21st yeah. century? Yeah. We, need, we need a more radical approach. Well, let me tell well, you, we you are... very far away in yeah. infrastructure, and, you know, we did a radical decision. To you are 30th in 34, uh, 30th out of 34 in the OECD, obviously not a place where you want to be. I have to say, I just came back from the United States. The Secretary of Education of the United States said, we are not happy being 29, so you must be in that, in, in mathematics at least, maybe uh, a, a dot about. And, and uh, again, Mexico, Chile, Turkey, Greece, perhaps, uh, are the ones who are at the low end. But what you want to do is, of course, to be no, uh, closer to the average first and then closer to the top. No, we want to beat the average. Yeah. And we have to, and we will. Uh, then, so oh, yeah. you have the, the skills, you have the education system. And then I have to say, you've made a very great progress on the healthcare system. Uh, but we have made a specific analysis on the healthcare system. I, j I delivered to the Prime Minister a copy of our report on the quality side of the healthcare system in Israel, which uh, was asked by the government uh, and we uh, uh, delivered. Uh, and in healthcare, there's a question of access, there's a question of uh, quality, and then there's a question of value for money, it's it, uh, because you cannot finance uh, the last uh, little need. Uh, and uh, uh, in those, uh, there has been very important improvement in Israel. And the question now is, how can you move from now? How can you make it better? How do you deal with the problem of aging of the workforce, of the doctors, of the nurses? How do you deal with overcrowding in some hospitals, in some hospitals under utilization, et cetera, which uh, are not uh, different from uh, many other countries, but still uh, they are there. Um, uh, you also have something which you have to deal with, both from the point of view of the budgets and also from the point of view of the institutions and also from the social and political point of view, and that is the aging process. You are now have a much more dynamic demographics than most of the countries. You are, in that sense, more vibrant, have kept up the, 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 the growth in the, in the population, but of course, there are, there, are, there, there are trends which are inevitable, in a way, uh, of uh, maturing uh, populations. And uh, those have to be taken care of. Uh, and they are also important in terms of how we look at the, um, at the, um, at the health system. Now, uh, uh, I, I mentioned that on the macroeconomic side, uh, uh, the question is, after uh, 2012, you remember, we said 2% deficit, it turned out to be <coughs> closer to 4. Now, it's moving to shrink the deficit, to bring it down uh, to uh, uh, more uh, sustainable levels. And here, I would have to say, I think what you have done now is uh, going to be able to cover uh, 2014. Right. Uh, now, the question is, how do we look at 2015, 2016 going forward to prepare to continue to bring down the debt to GDP ratio, which is 68%, and therefore is uh, uh, two thirds again of the average of the OECD. Um, the average of the OECD now is 90? Uh, no, closer, 100? Uh, 100? approximating 100. 100. Approximating That's 100. That's where we were yes. 10 years ago. Yes. And of course, uh, there Japan has the gold medal. They, they are at 220% or something like that. But that's, you don't want to be in that podium. No, we're competing uh, in the other yeah, direction. Yeah. And uh, so in that sense, I think uh, on the macro, uh, this is uh, good. Uh, 
in uh, reducing uh, uh, the deficit is something you've kept well. Uh, you probably said it in Israeli, but I just want to make sure uh, Hebrew, that uh, in, 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 in Hebrew, you, I think you, you said about the fact that in, from, 20, from 2001, that means from 2001 to, to 2011, the country in the OECD that has increased public expenditures less has been Israel, which is quite flat. Uh, I, I just want to make, uh, mention this uh, because it's quite remarkable. Uh, but uh, the question is, how do you now navigate with the, the new pressures, uh, the, the, the social cohesion pressures, et cetera, and how do you uh, compensate that with some of the increased uh, revenue coming from the uh, uh, gas discoveries, and at the same time, uh, make sure that you have a sustainable medium and long-term public finances. It's a, a, an act of equilibrium, it's tough, but it's also, this is a messaging system. This is a signaling system. It's like a, like a language. If the markets see Israel concerned about the fact that they have to confront unexpected circumstances about their fiscal position, that they are either increasing the revenues or cutting the expenditure or, or both over time, etc., then the markets continue to have the, the confidence. Israel continues to have a broad access at, at prices, which are, of course, uh, 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 very competitive, and, and at the same time, uh, the debt-to-GDP ratio <coughs> continues uh, to reduce, uh, and that uh, this, becomes... This keeps the envelope, the macroeconomic envelope it. intact. That's but the it. question you raise is, okay, what do you do within the envelope? That's it. How do you distribute within the envelope? The question of distributing uh, uh, within the, the envelope is, is quite important. And then what I would call, uh, Prime Minister, um, the structural the structural reforms. Why? Uh, and, and what do I mean by structural reforms? We are running out of monetary policy room in the whole of the world, although Israel has kept uh, good space still in the monetary policy. But of course, it's determined by a number of other circumstances, including what the US do in the tapering and other central banks, etc. cetera. Um, second, fiscal policy. We are trying to balance the books. We are trying to reduce the deficits and reduce the debt. Okay, everybody's doing that. So where are the degrees of freedom? How do you jumpstart growth? How do you continue to move growth forward? Well, structural means education. It means innovation. It means more competition. It means the tax system. It means the health system. It means the the linkage of universities, research centers, with the private sector and with the markets, you know? It, it means flexibility in the labor markets, it means flexibility in the product markets. Uh, these are the issues that are going to keep the growth going in the medium and in the long term. So it's not just a question of balancing the budget, that has to be done. It's not just a question of taking care of the debt issues. That has to be done. Right. It's not taking care of avoiding that there's a bubble in the, in, the, in the housing market. That has to be done. But then how do you do the medium and the long term? Well, you go structural. You also go social because social is a need. In, in particular in Israel, social cohesion has to be an element. There's been progress in there. More progress has to be made. You go green. Uh, with a concern about the environment and uh, concern about having a type of uh, development and growth that and is environmental uh, green, environmentally not friendly. Environmental green, not Islamist green. Uh, this is not, uh, yes, no, 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 no color of any political party or no color of any uh, um, <laughs> uh, environmental green, absolutely. Uh, and then, uh, last but not least, given the crisis, given what's going on, given the need to remain competitive, uh, the question of looking hard at the institutional setup uh, and what n needs to be changed there. Why? Because Israel is a small open economy. Uh, and what is the legacy of the crisis? The legacy of the crisis is low growth, high unemployment, growing inequalities, and also a drop in the confidence of people in the institutions that we have built in the last 100 years. These are the legacies of, of, of the crisis, and we have to deal with these legacies the of the crisis. Now, across the world. And then a country like Israel can do a lot better if 
everybody else is growing faster. If the cylinders uh, in the uh, engines of growth of the world are doing better. And what is happening there, uh, Prime Minister? Well, Israel is having to row twice as hard. And the reason is because the engine of trade is at half speed. In fact, we congratulate ourselves that we had a deal on trade facilitation in Bali, but trade is growing at half its normal speed. Uh, <coughs> investment is growing at half its normal speed in the OECD countries and you know in the larger <coughs> and uh, uh, credit in the OECD is flat, which means it's growing in the United States a little bit, maybe Japan, and is negative in Europe. And even the traditional engines of growth like the, the, um, the emerging economies are slowing down. So we have a context in which you have the legacy of the crisis and you have the four cylinders of the engine of growth going uh, stuck in second gear, you know, and cannot get out of second gear. Wow. In that context, then the performance of Israel is even more positive, you know, is even more admirable, I would say, but it also means the that the challenges uh, are more complicated. So I would stop here. Absolutely. Well, look, uh, I want to thank you again, uh, Uncle. This preliminary survey is very valuable because it comes from an overview. All advantage is relative. All competitive advantage is relative advantage. If you say that I have, in the military, I have 300 fighter aircraft, doesn't mean anything. Relative to what? If you have, I have, uh, if in business you say I have 20% market share, doesn't mean anything. Relative to what? Relative to somebody who has 50%, relative to somebody who has 2%. All competitive advantage is relative. The tremendous advantage of joining the OECD is that it has put us into the uh, uh, organization that enables us to judge our relative advantages and our relative weaknesses and to put a mirror before our face and say, okay, here's where we are today, here's where we want to be uh, in order to be never in the average. We don't accept the average. If we're below average, we want to beat the average. If we're ahead, we want to stay ahead. Uh, I think that what you say about the world engine is absolutely true. But here's one other advantage that we have over most of the OECD membership. It's the advantage of small being small. Because we're small, we're not a huge uh, aircraft carrier that has to make, it takes a long time to turn. We're a speedboat and we can move very quickly. But of course, this is the greatest challenge. So I want to thank you for holding a mirror before our uh, eyes and also for your friendship, your spirit, your honesty, uh, new professionalism. I think it's, uh, it's something that is uh, actually an asset not only for the OCD but for Israel itself. So thank you, and thank you all, and we'll continue this discussion without you. Thank you. Thank you.